Aloha and welcome to this show. This is the state of the state of Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii live streaming network series. Think Tech Hawaii broadcasts from our studio at 1164 Bishop Street at the core of downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Stephanie Stoll Dalton, and today our guest is Jose Fajardo, who is president and general manager of Hawaii Public Radio, referred to as HPR. He is speaking remotely on Think Tech Hawaii from his HPR, Kaheka Street offices in Honolulu. Thank you, Jose Fajardo, for joining us today for this interview conversation. <clears throat> I'm happy to, happy to be here, Stephanie. Thank you for, for having me. Well, great. Thank you. Um, Mr. Fajardo, if I can call you um, Jose. Um, of course, or, yes, please. Uh, okay. Um, I just <laughs> wanted to uh, say that I uh, would ask you for that informality, but I might refer to you with the whole name and out of respect at some point. But um, I know you came to uh, the, the role in the Hawaii Public Radio or HPR in 2016, and you came from experience as a Florida-based radio executive and uh, mm -hmm. where you had decades of work accomplished in the public media sector there. And previously, um, you served as the CEO of Central Florida's public broadcasting stations and uh, also served on the National Public Radio, that's NPR, and mm -hmm. on the National Public Radio Board of Directors twice. As a native of Puerto Rico, uh, you also bring familiarity with island life and the ways um, that uh, that applies to or can enrich the work of HPR here in Hawaii. Um, if you recall, Jose, in 2016, you presented, mm -hmm. after you were here, not for, for very long, to the Newcomers Club of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And that audience, including me, appreciated that you were a newcomer like them. Um, right. I'm sure you don't feel much like a newcomer now, but <laughs> not so new um, now. Right, not so new now. It's been um, almost four years since my arrival here in Hawaii. Uh, and you're right, having some island experience, having grown up in uh, Puerto Rico, uh, gave me a little bit of an advantage uh, coming to Hawaii because um, I didn't have the fear of uh, rock fever that a lot of people have. For me, it was it was natural to be on an island uh, like is uh, Hawaii. But uh, now it's been four years, and while it still feels new, and I'm still learning a lot about uh, Hawaii and the culture here and how to do business in Hawaii, it, it does feel like home. And, and now when I travel, um, I always look forward to returning back home uh, here in Hawaii. Well, I know that you describe many, uh, not many, but some of the challenges uh, for broadcasting in Hawaii. So you talked about the geography of the mountains and the ocean, and I know that that's a, a, a capital issue. You have to be able to mm -hmm. provide that connection that way, and I think you are the one that has provided it once you got here. I don't think we were broadcasting as widely, which you can comment on, but the urban and rural sectors across the islands also um, include consideration from maybe very disparate points of view, and also um, for reporting to fully reflect the diversity of the audience that's in this state. So I wanted to ask you to share then, as you've already started to do about your initial experience coming to the, this state, to HPR, and, and in maybe one of the most public roles as you look back on it and as you've thought about it or as you feel accomplishing about it, how did you find your way into the role that you deliver now? How has, mm -hmm. what has sure. happened to you along the way, I think is the question. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. so I think as I mentioned uh, at the Newcomers Club, um, I fell in love with radio uh, when I was very young, around eight years old, nine years old, I started listening to radio in Puerto Rico and I just knew, I had, I had an affinity for being in broadcasting, and I knew I wanted to be in radio. And when I was 12, I actually made the decision that I wanted to get into broadcasting. So everything I did through high school and college was oriented uh, to get into, into broadcasting. Uh, I got into commercial radio 
um, right out of college and I did commercial radio at a country radio station for about three years and uh, did some behind the scenes work at the local public radio and TV station in Colleen, Texas. Uh, and I eventually uh, was hired as a TV producer director uh, for the public TV station and then got promoted and became the program director for the public radio station, became the station manager, and then at the ripe age of 29, became the general manager of the public radio and TV station in Colleen. Um, and then I uh, was recruited for a job in Orlando, Florida, um, to run the radio station at the time in Orlando, which I did that in 1996. <clears throat> and um, over the years, uh, was promoted and became eventually the CEO president of the joint licensee of Orlando, which was a public TV and a public radio station. Did that for 17 years. Um, and then uh, during the recession uh, back in 2006, um, we decided to sell the public TV station to the local university. Um, and once that deal was accomplished, I decided to kind of retire from public broadcasting for a while. I was a little burnt out uh, from the process. And I went and I ran the uh, Chamber of Commerce in Orlando, Florida for three years. Um, and it was during that time that I received a call from the headhunter uh, to apply for this job at HPR. And the more, you know, Hawaii was actually not on my radar at all in terms of a career or a place to live. And the more I learned about Hawaii Public Radio, the more interested I got in the opportunity to take a station that was doing really, really good and taking it, you know, to a lot, you know, to a better, greater place. Um, so I came for the interview, was hired for the job, took the job, came here. Um, and at the time, actually, Stephanie, the station already had a number, number of transmitters um, around the state of Hawaii. And one of my tasks when I first arrived was to complete the statewide network. So we added our transmitter uh, in Hilo to allow us to add HPR1 and HPR2 to the east side of the big island. And then just recently, we acquired a new transmitter um, licensed to Molokai, um, located on Lanai. And the purpose really is to serve West Maui uh, and the island of Molokai and Lanai. So we just turned that transmitter on about three or four weeks ago. And well, so that brings our total yeah. of up to, uh, right now we're up 18 transmitters, repeaters, and boosters located around the state of Hawaii. So we're almost, we're, I would say we're 99.5% coverage of all the areas of population uh, in Hawaii. That's that's an accomplishment. That's a major investment too, isn't it? But it is high priority um, yeah, over it's, these it's three years. Our, it's our, yeah, it's one of our biggest <laughs> expenditures. Um, uh, and, you know, in, in Orlando, uh, I we covered, you know, a, a area greater than the population of Hawaii with one transmitter and one antenna, uh, one tower. And here in Hawaii, because of the the mountains and the terrain, the oceans, um, we have to build this infrastructure of towers. And all those towers, transmitters require power, uh, electricity, maintenance. Uh, so it's a big it's a big investment. And then we also have backup generators because, for example, this a couple of weeks ago in Haleakala, we had an ice storm, which knocked down what knocked off knocked us off the air uh, in our service to Maui. And uh, uh, we had to, you know, put fuel into the generator to make sure that we maintain our statewide network. So it's difficult. It's a fragile system. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. But that is why we raise the money from our local yeah. community. But well, do you have any uh, role in the emergency sis broadcasting system um, that you can share? I maybe it's a big secret, yeah. but what happens, no, for a, instance, no. <laughs> under attack and that sort of yeah, thing? Do you coordinate yeah, yeah, with the military yeah. and like that? Yeah, it's not a big secret. I mean, we are part of the backbone of the um, civil defense and the emergency uh, system uh, in the state of Hawaii. We're not the primary station that that uh, falls under the um, privilege of KSSK. Uh, but we have a system in our studio that if there is a national emergency or a statewide emergency, we are notified uh, by uh, the government. Um, we have a system in place that allows us to go on the air immediately and to transmit important information to our citizens. Mm -hmm. And that's an important role that we play uh, as public service to our community. Well, it sounds critical um, going mm -hmm. forward, especially, sure. and, and for some past events too. But I mm -hmm. wanted to say that you um, are acclaimed for spearheading 
modern programming. Um, I mm -hmm. see. And so I wanted to ask you, what is an example of that kind of program and how, and is it something you've done since you've come here to Hawaii and what difference did it make? Well, so a couple of things. Um, when, I, when I first came to um, Hawaii and HPR, uh, we, we did have two streams of programming, but each stream was programmed with what I call quilt patch programming. Um, so if you were a news um, listener, you would start on HPR 1, and then it would have to switch to HPR 2 for midday news programming and come back to HPR 1 for all things considered. Uh, and I thought that was kind of a, um, not a, not really good in terms of customer service, that we, we should make it easy for our listeners to find their content. So within a year of my arrival, we initiated a, uh, a program realignment of the stations, and we moved all the news content to HPR 1, and then made HPR 2 an all-classical music station. And so what that's done is allowed us to uh, make it easier for our listeners to find our content, which has increased our audience size for HPR. And it's also increased our membership contributions and our program underwriters. And then we looked at our local news, right? So where we can make an impact and be relevant in our community is with local content. So we've made improvements to the conversation. We have a new host with Catherine Cruz. We've invested additional dollars in more reporters. So we have... Um, I think the, the largest radio news team uh, in Hawaii. Uh, and we make sure that our, our reporters are traveling to our neighbor islands. So Casey Harlow, for example, was in Kauai recently to cover mm -hmm. uh, the arrest of uh, the councilman. We have sent reporters to Maui and the Big Island when news breaks there. Uh, and so we have really improved, I think, our, our local news coverage. And that's where I think we can make an impact with our investments. Well, how do you judge success in your program? So as these, these things, and thank you for removing the patchwork quilt and sorting some of that out. I think we all appreciate that, those of us who've been here for a while. So, but how do you judge the success of your programs? What are your means of assessment yeah, or evaluation? So there's couple, yeah, there's a couple of metrics that we use in, in public radio. Um, we do look at audience metrics. So we are, we do get uh, two rating periods um, uh, tw twice a year, once in the fall, uh, once in the spring. So we could see how our audience is listening to HPR. We also, um, one of the metrics that we use is membership. Are people paying for the value of public radio, of HPR? Uh, and where are people making those contributions when we have our fund drives? And in both those metrics, our audience has increased, our listening has increased, and our contributions has increased. We also do, um, since my arrival, we have done a annual membership survey which we sent to our entire membership database uh, to get uh, feedback directly from our members. And in those surveys, we ask our, our, our members, uh, is HPR, uh, do you trust us? Do you value um, our content? And in all those metrics, we're scoring, you know, mm -hmm. above where we were, you know, the average. Uh, and then we also have a strategic plan that our board has approved. And so we measure a lot of things to that strategic plan. Yeah. And then when I'm out in the community, you know, it's, it's, it's not science, but when I'm out in the community talking to um, uh, people, you know, I hear what they have to say. We have a community advisory board that also gives us feedback mm -hmm. as, as mm -hmm. representatives of the listeners. And we take all that into account uh, to measure the success of HBO. Well, I noticed in the, the report, the annual report for last year that yeah. you've had about, well, almost 50 broadcasts of HPR programs on NPR. So yes. I wondered if, if that was a signal of uh, a level of success that's important to this valuing of the work here. Is it? Um, yeah, it, it is. I mean, I think what it is, it's, um, it's a symbol of success of how serious NPR takes the coverage that we provide at, at, here at Hawaii Public Radio. Uh, it shows that we have a level of professionalism that is accessible, acceptable by NPR so that our some of our reporters, their stories end up not just on HPR, but also end up on the national magazines of Morning Edition, All Things Considered, mm -hmm. and, and Marketplace. So we've had a lot of um, reporters pitch their stories to NPR, and they've been accepted. And that just shows the level of you know the great work that we're doing locally is being acknowledged on the national level as well. Great. So when you say pitch, that means that when they're preparing and, and when they're 
they're reporting or broadcasting that they're thinking of the standards of of the national public radio as well as what and i know they overlap and are the same but they have that notion in mind the more national audience because so much of the work that you did have broadcast from there was very important uh, beyond hawaii even though it was based in hawaii i mean like the research on the the coral bleaching right. and some of the topics that mm -hmm. were um, major like right. that yeah, it happens. It happens two ways. Um, one, a reporter might have an idea uh, that germinates here in Hawaii that thinks that it could be a na of a national interest, and they will uh, reach out to the NPR editors and pitch the story for national use. And then sometimes what happens is NPR will call us and say, hey, this is happening in Hawaii or it's happening in the Pacific, and we want your reporters uh, to report on it on behalf of you know, for the audience of National Public Radio. And this happened both ways uh, for our reporters. Well, that is very interesting. I think that um, that, that that is a standard that that's important and, um, and mm -hmm. it, it, it helps Hawaii get the prominence it should have for work that goes right. on here that may only be known to the professionals who are associated with it. I know that in your goals for next, for this year, we're there now, 2020, mm -hmm. um, that you're gonna invest more in the community. So what, what does that mean that you're gonna invest more in the community? I mean, is this like the role of the community advisory board or is this the activities in the community or how, how, is, how do you work on that as a, as a balance in your broadcasting? Right. Well, I, I think uh, <clears throat> what we mean to say is that we want to engage more in the community. Um, so we have six uh, broad goals, and, and I have the copy of the strategic plan here with me. <laughs> uh, but uh, one of our, you know, one of the goals is to make sure that we have uh, programming that our listeners want to listen to and that it's valuable in their lives. Um, we want to bring the community together to have conversations. So we not only want to be a station that talks to you through the radio with content and information, but we want to engage in the community so that the community is part of this conversation. And the way we do that is uh, through, uh, we have a daily show called The Conversation. In fact, I'm in the studio right now of The Conversation. And it's a daily Monday through Friday, one hour program where we talk about local issues. And oftentimes we'll open up the telephone lines and ask our listeners to call in with questions. And they do, and we've got the governor sitting right there in this very room and senators and members of our Legislature, legislature to take questions on the hot seat from our listeners uh, throughout the state of Hawaii. And then we also want to, you know, elevate um, our community. And we do that by being um, active participants in our community. And that's, you know, and that's not just with news, but also with our art organization. So we partner with the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra. We partner with the opera uh, to elevate their programming because when, when they do better, our community uh, does better. And we also make sure, um, Stephanie, that we're doing this not just in Oahu, but you know, throughout our entire neighbor island. So this past weekend, I was in Maui, uh, meeting with donors and members in Maui. The week before that, uh, I was in Hilo, and we tried to do events throughout um, the islands of Hawaii. So we're not just Oahu-centric, which we sometimes tend to be, but really our intent at being uh, on our neighbor islands. We had an event with a show that we used to do called Aloha Shorts, uh, which was a storytelling uh, radio program. And we took it to all the neighbor islands. So we had a sold out show in Waimea on the big island, we had a sold out show uh, in Maui, two sold out shows here in Oahu, and a sold out show in Hawaii. Uh, Very, and and, yeah. And, yeah, and it's a break even proposition, but for us it's about being there, and being engaged with our community. So that's how we invest in our communities, by being present and by elevating the conversation of what's important to Hawaii. Well, that, that is an enormous effort and, 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 and also a range, uh, a very broad range of, of outreach and the scope mm -hmm. of all of those topics. And now I want to bring up another one that you mentioned as one of your goals, too, that has to do with the elections. You're, you're committed mm -hmm. uh, if I can use that word committee, you said you would uh, cover a lot of the national as much as possible. We're out right. here far away and depend on that, of course. Right. And then also the local elections. So how how right. is uh, all of that going to, to, to work for you? 
Yeah, so nationally, of course, we, we rely on NPR to help us with the national coverage, and we have preempted uh, some of our local programs to bring national stories. Um, we are we have a, a national call-in show that's taking place after um, all the primaries. So tomorrow during Super Tuesday, we'll have a live show um, uh, mm-hmm. nationally. But locally, yeah, you're right, Stephanie. So we know that a lot of our listeners tune into Hawaii Public Radio for the national news. But what makes us relevant is our local coverage. And um, we are committed to local uh, our local elections and, and the mayor's race is an important race here for uh, for our state of Hawaii and for those people living here on Oahu. Yeah, I was going uh, to ask be... you. Yeah, I was going to ask you more about the details of your coverage for the mayor's race. Yeah. since That's the third executive high, high executive we have. So what are you thinking yeah. about doing for that? I think, what, there's six or seven right. candidates at this point. Yeah, so we'll probably be interviewing each interview, uh, well, interviewing each candidate, uh, profiling each candidate on the conversation and during our local segments during morning edition, all things considered. We are trying to develop and maybe make plans for a debate, but it's just, it's hard to get eight people, seven people in one room at the same time. And we may uh, look at partnering with uh, another media uh, to, to do that, but certainly we'll be profiling all the candidates and then on election day, election night, we'll be doing results and then we'll be doing commentary about, you know, the impact of those elections. So what we do well is we don't do the headlines. I mean, that's what commercial stations do. They do the headlines. What we do is we go one level further, peel back the onion to have deeper conversations of what does this mean now to yes. our community? Yes. And what does this mean for the future of HPR, you know, of, of, of Hawaii? So, you know, besides the headline, we're going to deep dive, uh, uh, have a deeper dive into those conversations. Well, I, I think that is very interesting when we'll be looking to uh, appreciate that and learn from it. So I, um, mm-hmm. I allowed you for, for setting up um, these uh, goals to keep us informed and to give us that those insights that people can have who focus on these topics and do the reporting. Right. You know, I wanted to change over a little bit to, I wanted to change uh, topics uh, to that your um, that you have attained fiscal stabi- stability from all, in, mm-hmm. all that I'm reading about it, which right. is really quite good news. I, you've already said that 95% of your funding comes from the community, which is a very right. a, a high bar. And yeah, uh, can so, you tell us a little uh, bit about how you manage that? What's the magic? Yeah. I, I love sharing good news uh, about our fundraising. So um, a chair uh, that I worked with at National Public Radio once told me, uh, no margin, no mission, no mission, no margin. And that's a great way to approach, I think, public radio. We have to raise money uh, to do what we do so well. And we've been very successful here at HPR. Uh, we have a budget of about $6.4 million dollars. It's, a, it's been a surplus budget for the last several years. Um, 95% of that money is raised locally through membership campaigns, uh, members who are sustainers of HPR. We have mm-hmm. almost 15,000 members of HPR, and 54% of those are sustainers. And that's About a fairly point- new concept, isn't it, the sustainer right. support? Right. Yeah. So, and that's where our, our our members give on a monthly basis instead of just once a year. And what that has allowed us to do, Stephanie, is by increasing our num- the number of sustainers, we have become less dependent on on-air fund drive. So, mm-hmm. on the upcoming spring fund drive, instead of a 10-day membership campaign, we're only going to have an eight-day membership campaign, with no fundraising at nighttime. Uh, and our goal where about three years ago, our goal used to be about $900,000. It's going to be just under $800,000. Um, and so we're very successful in that area, but we also have been successful with local businesses who want to support Hawaii Public Radio. So that's grown. We're now at about uh, $1.7 million raised in, in uh, businesses who support Hawaii Public Radio. Uh, and with that surplus that we've been generating every year, We've been able to grow our rainy day fund. So we have about $2.7 million in a uh, unrestricted account that we can go to if a transmitter blows up. If exactly. Falls down. We That's have reserve a, money. Yeah. yeah, so we have, you know, it's it's almost six months of operating money. If there's a disaster, we can operate for six more months 
uh, without any issue. That we is also just... have an endowment. Oh, an endowment yeah, we too. Endowment. We have an endowment of almost $6 million that we've been able to raise over the last couple of years. Um, and so we're a nonprofit that's raising money not just to stay on the air and to pay our bills and to make cash and, and pay, make payroll. We're a nonprofit that's raising money to grow the organization. And that's really a thrilling place to be. Well, that is very good news and, 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 and clearly described as to how it is all working now. And those um, are some strategies that you brought here and, and, and implemented, especially the sustainer right. member. I, I know that yeah, that's a national right. well, one too. It was a national strategy, but one that wasn't um, it wasn't one that HPR had embraced fully mm -hmm. yet. And mm -hmm. so we really embraced that. We also embraced a philosophy of really using our on-air fundraising time mm -hmm. uh, to recruit new members. Uh, yeah. And so our emphasis during the fund drives is to add more new members to the station. And that's where we've had a lot of success. Um, well, that was, that is encouraging for the engagement and your mm -hmm. commitment to, to the local community and also to fiscal stability, which is the key to happiness, I'm sure. I wanted to uh, talk to you just a little bit about the reporting and the broadcasting, but mostly the reporting. I know you're committed mm -hmm. to reporting that reflects the the diversity of our listeners here. And mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask how you think about that. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you um, ensure that the, the viewpoints are respected and, and, and applied. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so first of all, I think our approach is that we're not Hawaiian public radio. We are Hawaii public radio. So we don't pretend to be Hawaiian, but we are certainly of Hawaii and for Hawaii. Um, I think if you looked at pictures of our news team, even our entire staff, you would find that Hawaii Public Radio is probably one of the most diverse radio stations in the country. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have a very diverse uh, uh, group of reporters, both representing... Um, you know, representing the Hawaii culture, we have a, a Hawaiian native speaking reporter in Kuhuwei Harishi, um, and we have a couple of folks that are local, you know, born and raised in Hawaii that are part of our news team. Sandy Oshiro, who used to work for their local newspaper, went to California for a while, is back now as our editor. Catherine Cruz, who's from Guam, but, you know, grew up here in, in, in Hawaii. Uh, a couple of our producers are from Hawaii. Um, so we're very sensitive to that. I mean, we have a position that's open in our local news team. Uh, we try to hire local. Once, that's that's one, really it's easier because yeah, very it's, it's good. Easier for some that makes a, here. That's going to make the difference. And Jose, I appreciate yeah. all of that insight into what your operations are all about. And we're out of time. So oh we'll have gosh. to well, wrap it up so um, uh, we can do it again sometime as things go on here. I'm Stephanie Stoll-Dalton. This is the State of the State of Hawaii on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We've been talking remotely with Jose Fajardo about his leadership and achievements at Hawaii Public Radio. I'll see you again in two weeks on the next State of the State of Hawaii. Mahalo for your attention, everyone.